Hey, I'm Brian Lee, and yep, this is my job. Art for me started from old enough when they ask you, what are you gonna do when you grow up? And I used to say, I'm gonna be an artist for the funny paper. I was consumed with making artwork and the teachers were picking up on it pretty early. A few years ago, my mom comes to my house and she says, I've got something for you I think that you're gonna want. So I open them up and it's two progress reports from like fifth or sixth grade. Both of them almost verbatim said the same thing from different teachers that Brian completely is consumed with sketching and drawing. He never pays attention. He's not doing his homework. Would you please discipline him? My mom and my dad grew up extremely poor. Neither one of them got further than about the eighth grade because they had to stay home and farm. That's how they ate. So for me to go to school was a big deal. I had decided that I wanted to go to school. I had taken a few years off right out of high school, but I was still drawing a lot, and I found out there was a little community college there. Of course, my parents couldn't afford any of that, so I paid for everything. After the first year, I met uh, probably the most influential teacher in my life. She taught me so much about ego, and if I was the best person in that class at drawing, on that world scale, I was still just a dot. You know, I knew lots of artists that still worked regular jobs. I wanted to be the one that that was all I did. Tattooing for me, uh, the light bulb was around my junior year. All my friends were getting their first tattoos because of age. So I would draw a lot of tattoos for friends. Say, hey, I want you know this bird and I want it doing this. Will you sketch it up so I can take it to the tattoo shop? So I did, I did that a lot. They'd show me the tattoo and, and I'd have either one of two responses. I'd either be like, that doesn't look anything like my drawing. Or it would look really, really good and I would say, that was $500, you were only gone like two hours. And a light bulb went off. Really, a hundred bucks an hour to draw on people? Maybe that's a good avenue. I always knew that drawing and painting was my passion. I knew that it was very hard to make a living out of that. So I think the way I sold it were, look, I can do this you know, during the day. I'll still do my painting, but I won't count on it for my profit. So I went to several tattoo shops with a portfolio full of artwork. I wouldn't say I got shot down. Um, I definitely got a whole lot of, well, you know, this isn't the kind of artwork you're going to be doing. Some shops were like, we want $5,000 up front, we'll teach you, and that doesn't guarantee a job. So at that point, tons of my friends knew I was into it. I had exactly 20 people that would be like, I'll be number two. If you just find that first skin, I'll be the second one. I trust in you that much. So at that time, you could go in the back of a tattoo magazine and buy a tattoo kit. You know, it was like 500 bucks. The day it showed up, one of my very best friends had a small tattoo right here. He's watching me open the box and I'm all excited and I'm turning them on and he's like, touch that up. Uh, we call that these days scratchers. It's not, um, it's not something I recommend, um, but I'm not ashamed of it either. There's some great artists out here who started out of their house. And I probably did 200 tattoos in a year. Word was getting to some of the local tattoo shops that I was doing that. I got a, a pretty stern message from uh, someone I ended up working for that you're not going to do that anymore. If this is what you want to do and I've seen some of your work, come talk to me. One of the first things the guy said to me is that he almost didn't believe that the photos were mine if I was self-taught. But he gave me that shot. I'll be grateful forever. From the time of getting that opportunity to work in a real shop to getting where I am now, there was some obstacles. I'd always treated every job like I was the boss some of the things that came out of my mouth the other employees necessarily didn't fly with and I didn't care because I thought I was doing better work I was more booked I was like I can do this as, a, as the boss 18 years in now I definitely have a very strong clientele I've had customers come in and go you can tattoo anything you want today and I would say every single one of them probably knows if you give me that opportunity I'm gonna put a girl of some sort on you I can do a really cool snake but when it comes into the poutiness of the lips or the sparkle in the eye, that's the one like as I'm doing the drawing in the back, I'm excited. Tattooing on the body 20 years later can definitely wear you out. I already have carpal tunnel uh, in my right hand. I have tendonitis in my left forearm. I've been playing the drums since I was 10, so that's 30 years. Use my hands. I had a bucket list at 20 years old. I'm standing now at 40 and I've done a lot of those things. Am I still passionate enough to keep this going for another 40? And, and I believe completely yes. Somebody really smart one time told me to never get so busy having a career that you forget to have a life. This will always be here as long as my body will allow me to do it. And maybe by that age, I'm gonna find the guy like me. If I could open up that door for a few other people, I think I got a good bucket list for the next 40.